I'm so fertile. <laughs> Move over, COVID. I got baby fever. Hi, I'm Mama G. I was living a pretty cushy lifestyle in Toronto, but it was freaking mundane. I couldn't continue living in my comfort knowing there was so much out there for me to see. So I quit my job, packed my things, and left. This is month three of travel. Come along with me. I need more compassion with myself than others. I've been trying to avoid checking my phone first thing in the morning. So I start with morning affirmations, cleaning both myself and my room, movement, meditation, and walking in the sunlight. I mix it up, sometimes I don't even do it, but habits are formed in the body, and you just gotta do it. Okay, so today I'm gonna get ready because I'm gonna go to an ecstatic dance. I wanna bring you along. You can't really film the Kasadi dance. I was actually so worried that I'd have to stock up on so many things coming to Asia and then I realized, wait, everything is made in Asia. Okay. I went to Sephora in Bangkok before I came here and I saw this and I thought that is so freaking necessary for me to maintain my youthful glow. So I can be 25 forever, but it's Shishido's, the perfect protector, very, very water resistant. That was the reason why I wanted to buy it. I feel beautiful when I'm tan. What makes you feel beautiful? I'm curious. We're gonna head out, we're gonna head out. So one thing that I've been really feeling worried about is just having enough. And it's so cheap here. But then the back of my subconscious mind is like, how long is that money gonna last me? I'm just having fun with my life. You know what? If I'm going that broke, at least I did something I loved. Kai and next. Oh, this Latin's atrocious. And this is what makes it even more waterproof. Yeah, now this is the face. Let's put some clothes on. What have we got here? Something cute. Not too cute. You like it? I manifest making friends today. This baby girl has been a little bit lonely. My calculator watch. Can't tell the time without it. And the snake thing. Do you think I look pretty? Deodorant. Oh, I do look heckin' cute. Deodorant. I have this really nice oil that I got back home in Toronto. And if you're ever in Toronto, go to Kensington Market, go to this, this tribal something place. And this oil is called Pussy. You need to smell it. You need to freaking smell it. Yeah, it's actually called Pussy. Okay, I go dance. Come with me. My room's an absolute mess. But you know what? It works for me. I love you. Oh, water bottle. Unfortunately, I couldn't film the ecstatic dance, but just imagine a room with about 150 plus people sweaty and dancing to a whole array of music. No drugs, no alcohol, no phones, just sweat and movement. This is my favorite thing to get. I love it, but I gotta get it. Yeah. Large coconut water? 180? Yeah, are you Joy? Yeah. Awesome! Joy and I met through a mutual friend on the island and we've been trying all week to get together so it was beautiful how the timing worked out and we just headed to a cafe nearby to get to know each other. Okay, hi. Only, because I've only been here a couple of weeks but...
almost always reading two books at the same time. One for education and one for fun. My friends just hanging out with each other without me. Back in my room, I did a quick little outfit change. Just wanted to put some overalls on because I want to go check out some acro yoga. Hopefully they're actually doing some jams today. I'm gonna to go check out the beach. If not, I'm just gonna chill, read, and just enjoy some alone time. I had chicken and sweet potato fries and I'm praying that my body can handle that well. I just took some bitters, but we're gonna see how my skin feels in a little while. Updates to come. I feel like I'm comparing my experience a lot to what I had at Lake Atitlan in Guatemala where I very quickly immersed myself in the community and it was such a small community that it was really easy to just know everybody and just be surrounded by friends all the time. And it's not the case here because this island is pretty big. Like, I consider it the same size as Toronto. It's so different than what I've experienced before. It's only been a couple of weeks, so I have time, but it's still weird. I'm uncomfortable, but I feel like that's just a part of the process of growth, right? Especially with my skin. It's starting to get itchy. I'm so sorry I did that. I really can't eat fried foods, huh? God damn. There's a saying that goes, if you don't like being lonely, then you're just in bad company, which I don't fully agree with. We are social creatures and alone time is crucial for growth, but we need community. I'm home now, it's currently 7, 12 in the evening, and to be honest with you, I had a had a good day for what it's worth. On one hand, I could say that I didn't have a good day because nothing crazy exciting happened. Or I can change my perspective and say that I had a freaking fantastic, safe day. I didn't get into an accident. I got to dance. I'm the most free I've ever been in my entire life. And as much as I can fixate on my life being this wild adventure. It was simple. I read on the beach. I did get a message the other day that that seems like a pretty cool opportunity. I had a couple of really cool DJs hit me up online, found me on Facebook, and they're trying to reach out to me and see about collaborating on something, and I don't know what that's about, and I don't have many details to share, if any, right now, but who knows what will happen in the future. Update on my skin, it's not as itchy as it usually is which is a really good news, and I'm gonna self-care the love and heck out of myself. I'm gonna take a shower, I'm gonna see if I'm still hungry after, but I'm probably gonna watch a movie and just be with myself. Okay, let's get ready for bed. I'm so dang spoiled, they gave me fresh towels. I freaking love The Ordinary Company. Obsessed. Just lather up the heck out of your face. Two freaking towels! What is this? Paradise? Oh wait, it is. I'm gonna proceed to get unready and I'm just gonna rant to y'all about my life so far because y'all are my girlies now. Sorry, you're my girlfriend. <laughs> I feel like I can use my channel as a way to really just talk because I don't have friends here. <laughs> and all of my friends are on the other side of the world which is like the opposite time difference so I have nobody to talk to in real time. To be honest with you, there's a part of me that left Toronto in the hopes of meeting somebody. And I know you never meet the love of your life when you're looking for them, and that's why it's so frustrating being in this mindset. And I'm trying hard not to want that, but then it's just perpetuating the cycle of like, the more that I know that I want. It's kind of like thinking about the white elephant, and the more you think about the white elephant, you're gonna think about the white elephant. So right now, I need to just work on being so present and falling in love with my, what I'm doing right now to get out of that mindset. I went to that exciting dance this morning, and 
there were so many people macking up on each other. And a part of me is all like, oh, that was so cute. But the other part of me is like, where's mine? Can I have some? Where, where'd y'all find yours? And I downloaded Hinge, but I didn't activate it. I downloaded it with the intention of at least making some friends on there, but low key like for external validation. But then I deleted it. I have quite a bit of friends who've met the love of their life on dating apps. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm a storyteller. I want a crazy story, okay? I can't have expectations for that, but I would love to have a story that I could just, would never get sick and tired of repeating. One of my favorite questions to ask couples, how did you guys meet? I feel like it's unrealistic to want a fairy tale meet you but if we're all about manifesting out this bitch then why can't i manifest a dope meet you fuck it i'm a daydream when i want to daydream it's not harming anybody if i meet somebody doing regular ass things like at a grocery store or at a fucking gas station then that's still stinking cute we'll make it cute with enough flourish anybody can make anything sound good but back onto this whole love island thing like i really want to focus on making things and creating more content and really devoting my time and attention to what I want to be doing full-time and I'm manifesting a future where I can create dope stories for a living. I'm sending voice notes to my my festy bestie Nico and he was saying like, what did he say? Dang, I lost my train of thought. Chicka chicka choo choo. Oh yeah, love is so distracting and it's true, love is heckin' distracting but I personally think that you can use it as a catalyst to grow and I think it's even better to be in love when you're also busy doing other things because then you can't be obsessed with them as much as you normally would if you didn't have anything going on because they can quickly take over your life but it's like for me if I'm focusing on my career path while being in love then it's not only gonna help me be more inspired to create if I have mental energy and motivation to but it'll just make me not fall into the tendency of anxious attachment and staring at my phone and just like not even spending any time truly with myself because I'm so fixated on spending time with them. What do y'all think about that? But anyways, now for the juicy tea. So, there's a guy. I want to kind of work together, but not really. And oh my god. You know what? I'm just going to say it out loud. I have a crush on him. I have a crush and I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere, but I think it's kind of cute to just have somebody that you're, I don't know, that, that sexy tension is kind of nice. He's too fixated in the discipline of his own life. He's just not interested in me, but which I kind of find hard to believe because I could just tell. You know when guys just like flustered or like stumbly? Yeah, that's him. It's cute, but I, I really want to be more my feminine this time around where I don't, I'm not the one that's so forward and approaching. I just want to finally be in a place where it's effortless. And I told the universe that I'm open for a lover because I was so in the mindset that I don't date to date, I date to get married, which is kind of crazy at 25. A quote that I heard is like, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, which is freaking hilarious because Low-key, I have a five-year plan from the moment that I meet the person that I want to marry where it's like I don't want to have kids until five years later after we meet where we have a couple of years together to just get to know each other truly to travel to really really enjoy being together and enjoying alone time and then we commence with the with the conception. I'm not getting any younger here. That means that the more years that pass, it's about my 30s. I'm, it's okay. I'm so fertile. <laughs> I just I feel like maybe my body is in a really deep state of wanting to procreate. I'm not baby fever bad. <laughs> Move over COVID. I'm still recovering from the loss of my past relationship. We still have a really strong, good relationship even if we don't speak for weeks, months. And he made me feel so safe. When we were traveling together, I genuinely still felt like I was at home whenever we were together because he was such a feeling of familiarity. We would sleep together every night when we were back in Toronto and then we were traveling. It still felt like I was coming home every single night because I had him. We were each other's main support system. We were each other's best friend. And one of the biggest forms of support that I ever received from him was feeling like I could be fully taken care of where if shit really hit the fan, he was so willing to just support me. And I feel like right now, because I don't feel a certain level of safety and security because I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing in a couple of months. I don't know what's gonna happen if I'm gonna have enough money. Like, it's scary. I had a dream this morning where I was moved back to Toronto. I lived back at that yoga house, the community house, but there were these Asian mobsters in the inside sneaking around behind the walls and we were well aware of them, but there were people on the outside watching to try to catch them. And the girls and I were just 
didn't mind it that was just a part of our daily routine our daily lives we just ignored them but we had to watch out in case they got caught because they would get there would be a whole like mexican shootout but as i journaled about it i felt safe because it's it was the apparent an idealistic vision of having a roof over my head. It's very clear that I have all these things to support me, but the anxiety of not knowing what's gonna happen, the anxiety of like, ooh, I can get caught, ooh, like there's always a possibility of something happening, it just lurks in the back of my mind. I feel as though this yearning for a relationship is coming from a place of missing the dynamic I had with Philip and needing a sense of stability and security. But the thing is, how do I get it? There is no way for me to actually know what the future is gonna hold. So all I can do right now is to just surrender to the feelings of discomfort. That's what I've gotten to. Surrender to your discomfort. I am innately safe in that I do have support systems if things really did go awry and it's a process. It's definitely a process and that's where I feel like this crush that I have is something that I want to witness. I don't want to try anymore. That's another thing where I'm playing with. Am I willing to just look around and find out? Am I willing to actually entertain lovers to just explore the dynamics of being anxious attached? Or am I just gonna wait out and be so picky about finally meeting the love of my life, the father of my children? God damn, so many questions but all I can do is just to surrender and sit with them, you know? I don't really know everything and that's probably one of the best parts about being human is to watch life unfold as it does one by one naturally. That's today's lesson, this month's lesson, this week's lesson. Trust in the timing of your life and surrender to the chaos of the mystery of not knowing because that's where the most beautiful things come to fruition. Dang, I should talk to myself more. You're picking up what I'm from down. If you like this kind of content, um, let me know down below. I'm gonna try to have more of a consistent schedule of creating and posting, so please stick around, like, subscribe, watch all my videos, and let me know what you like and what you wanna see more of so that I can continue creating beautiful things for you. I'm Mama G. Now go forth, be kind, especially to yourself. I'll see you next week. <laughs>